morning, everybody. I'm going to have to wear my glasses. I'm very relieved that this has been covered over because that could have gone horribly wrong, couldn't it? <laughs> I'm able to trip over air, so, you know, putting lots of water behind me is not a good idea. So, <laughs> so um, today I thought I'd talk to you about a story that Jesus actually told himself. And uh, it's quite an amazing story. It's about a homecoming. And today we are all invited to a homecoming. Wherever you feel you're at with God and your relationship with Jesus, you are today invited home back to God. And um, just in case you didn't know what we all believe from all the songs that we've been singing, just a quick recap, really, that will be found in the story that Jesus tells that I'm going to tell to us this morning. But we have, um, just check this is true, that you believe this. You have a shell. Your body is a shell, yeah? Do you believe that? Do you think you have a soul, a mind, will, your mind and your will and your emotions? Are we all feeling emotional? Some of us more emotional than others. You can ask my husband about that. (laughs) And we also have a spirit. And our spirit is the part of us, really, that I'm talking to this morning. And there's a guy called Paul who wrote quite a lot of the Bible. And he was writing to a church in Rome. And he said these words. He said, God's spirit right in the core of us, bears witness with our spirit that we are in fact children of God. We are children of God. Whether we know it or not, we came from God and his arms are wide open. And today he's saying to us all, come home, (laughs) come home to me. There's a picture that's going to come up on the screen by a guy called Charlie Mackesy. Has anyone read his book or watched the film? The fox, the bowl, the someone and the something. <laughs> the, bowl, <laughs> the bowl and the hare and the tortoise and the snail. <laughs> the boy, the fox and the mole. <laughs> he wrote that and he also drew this because he's a man of faith and he painted it out. And I find when I look at this painting, something stirs in my spirit. <laughs> so we're going to have it up on the screen. So if you're the kind of person who likes a visual, embrace yourself in this. Immerse yourself in this. But while this is up on the screen, I'm going to read through this story that Jesus told to try and paint us a picture of what God as a father is like to us. And I wonder when we read it, who we think we are in the story. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set out for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After that, he spent everything. There was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went... He hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he came to his senses. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I'll set back out. I'll go back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. So he's over here and the father is here. I wonder which direction you think the father is facing. It says this. While he was a long way off, his father saw him. His father was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. In this story, the son could be us. And the Father is God. 
And this morning, I want you to know that God sees you. He has his eye on you. He's in a wonderful position. His guts are full of compassion. Right gut-wrenching compassion for you. And he's coming towards you in relentless pursuit today. Because he calls us all his precious children. And today he's calling us home to him. Whether we've ruined our lives and we're over here, or whether we're the next one that he starts to talk about. This son, who'd been off and come back, he said his little speech <laughs> that he'd practiced. I've sinned against you, against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But listen to the father's reaction to that. The father said to his servants, quick, get the best robe, put it on him. Today, God wants to give you the best. He wants to take off all the rubbish you've carried and give you the best. He put a ring on his finger, which was like giving this rebellious child the family credit card. Bonkers. He says, into your hands, I put everything that's mine. I know you've messed it up, but here we go. You're home. And he says, put sandals on his feet. And he says to him, you know, you have walked through a lot of mess in your life and you've brought it back everywhere you've traveled. You've walked it around in the life, in the relationships. You've carried the dust. You've carried the mud. You've carried the mess. And it's got everywhere. It's infected everything, every relationship, including the one with your father God. But he says now, put some sandals on his feet. <laughs> Change those shoes up. <laughs> put some good news on those feet. And God wants to do that for us all today. Then he says something else, which is absolutely nuts. He says, bring the fattened calf and kill it and let's have a feast and celebrate. And that one animal would have fed the entire village. God is a party God <laughs> and he really celebrates us. And then he said, to the son who said, I'm not worthy to be called yours anymore. He said this, this son, <laughs> he still called him his son. This son is mine. He was dead, but now he's alive. And some of our spirits, some of our souls, even some of our shells might be dead today. But God is calling you to life. He says, for the ones that are lost... We have no idea how to navigate life. God says, I can see you. Walk with me and you're found. And then they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, there's another son. See if you relate to this one. The older son. And he was in the field and he came near the house. He heard the music. He heard the dancing. He called one of his servants and he asked him what was going on. So the father explains, well, your brother's come home. And so I've killed the fattened calf because he's back, he's safe, he's sound. But the older brother, he became angry, probably a bit confused, and he refused to go in. He got in a right strop. So his father went out to him as well. He didn't leave him in a tis was either. And he pleaded with him. But the son says, Look, all these years, I've been slaving for you. He didn't quite understand who his father really was. He said, I've been trying my best, slogging my guts out. I'm a nice person. Have you ever said that to God? I've never disobeyed you. All your orders. Is that what we think of God? 
And then he says this, which is, I think, a classic line from the Bible. <laughs> you never even gave me a goat. <laughs> what a line. <laughs> Imagine saying that to the Most High God, the creator of the universe. You never gave me a goat. <laughs> so I could celebrate with my friends. This son, he squandered everything. He spent all your money, he's lost your property, he's bought prostitutes, and you've killed the fattened calf for him. But listen to the tone of the father. Remember, this is a picture of God. My son, my precious child, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. Let me say that again. This is God speaking to you. You are always with me. Everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate. We had to be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and he is found. It's about us. And it's about the most ridiculous, loving, powerful father who is totally secure, standing, facing us, noticing us, calling to us, charging after us in relentless pursuit with his arms wide open. And today he says, come back home. In the book of Peter in the Bible, it describes how this happened. And it was through Jesus. And Jesus died on a cross, pummeled, brutally murdered. But this is how it's described. He used his servant body to carry our sins all our regrets, all our filthy gone wrongs mistakes. Those are the sins that distort our lives and wreck our relationship with others and God. He carried them all to the cross on his body so we could be rid of them, rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became our healing. The writer says this about us. You were like lost sheep. We're not just like wandering off sons. We're like lost sheep. No idea who we are or where we're going. But this is what God says. Now we are named and we're kept for good by the shepherd of our souls. He's calling us home. And all of us sometimes need to come home to God. (laughs) Whether we feel like we know God and we're in a close relationship, whether we've gone off facing in the other direction so we can't even see who God is, what he's like with his wide open arms. But let me remind you who God is, in case you got round the wrong way somehow. There's lots of Hebrew words that describe God in the Bible, and I quite like finding out the meanings of things. So you never knew you were going to go to a Hebrew lesson, did you? (laughs) But these, when the Bible's written in Hebrew, you have to look for what it means. And God is described in lots of ways in Hebrew. Let me just read you some of them. See if you need God to be this. He's El Roy, the God who sees. He sees you. He's Adonai. He is Lord and Master. The scripture says that heaven is his home and earth is his footstool. Everything on this planet, including us, goes underneath the lordship of God. He's Lord and Master. Not a popular term, is it, when we've had abuse of power, but God is trustworthy to be our master. He's Yahweh Rapha, 
the God who heals. I'd love to pray. We as a family would love to pray if you need the healing power of God for your body, for your mind, for your soul. We've seen miracles in this church where our God has healed. We'll pray for you because that is who he is. He's El Elkanah. He's the consuming fire. Don't you think for one minute when I'm describing a warm, embracing father that he is not powerful? He opened his mouth and breathed out the stars. And he's calling you to himself. The all-consuming fire. He's Yahweh Shalom. He is the Lord of all peace. Can you feel his presence? The peace of God is here right now. And he wants to come deep into your heart and give you a supernatural peace that goes beyond of all your understanding. And that will guard your heart, guard your mind. I think our world needs peace. And we can introduce you to him. He's El Salai. He's the God of strength. He is a rock. He's movable. He's solid. He's Yahweh Hesed. He's the God of forgiveness and mercy. Does anyone need a fresh start? The Bible says God's mercies can be new every single morning. He's here to wash you clean. <laughs> He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. Don't think that because your back is turned that he is not watching and he is not with you. He is Yeshua, which means Jesus, which means God saves. And guys, the world will tell you a lot, but I don't know if it will tell you this, that Jesus Christ saves and he wants to save. He wants to save you. He's desperate to call you home to relationship with him. He says to you today, you are his child. His spirit is calling to your spirit today. He says, you might not know me. You might have your back to me, but I know everything about you. I know when you're sitting down, when you're standing up, I'm familiar with you because you were made in my image. And in me, you live and you move and you have your being because you are really my child. I knew you even when you were conceived. I chose you before. Even when I planned creation, you're not a mistake. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Lots of people have got God wrong. He's not distant, he's not angry, he's powerful, yes, but he's completely expressing love because we're his children and he's our father and he'll offer us more than our earthly fathers ever could because he's a perfect father and every good and perfect gift comes from his hands and he's our provider, he will meet all of our needs. His plan for our future is full of hope, not just on this planet, but eternally full of hope. He loves us and his love is everlasting. He sings over us. He never wants to stop doing good to us. He calls us his treasure. He's in relentless pursuit. He wants to show you great and marvelous things, but he responds to your response. If we seek him, we will find him. Are you seeking today? He wants to do more for us than we could possibly imagine. He's our greatest encourager. He's a father who comforts us in trouble. When we're broken hearted, he's close. When a shepherd's carrying a lamb, that's like God carrying us close to his heart. And one day he will wipe away every tear we've ever cried on this earth. And he will take away all pain that we have ever suffered. We have the hope of heaven. And Jesus reveals God. Jesus is God. So if you want to know what God is like, 
look at Jesus, grab a Bible. He's exactly like God. He came to show us that God is for us and not against us, to tell us he's not counting our sins. He died so we could be reconciled to our Father. It was the ultimate expression of love. It was brutal, it was grim, and he did it for you. He paid for it all. He gave up everything to get you. And when we receive Jesus, we receive God. His spirit comes in. You see, our spirit is screaming out for God's spirit. And then once we get it, nothing will ever separate us from his love. God is calling us home. He says, come home. I'll throw you the biggest party heaven's ever seen. He's always been our father. But he's asking us today, will you be my child? He's waiting for us. He's almighty God. And we rise, the picture of baptism, washing it all away and rising. So much of us just dies off when Jesus died. All of our worst bits are swapped for all of God's best. And I don't want us to miss it. I don't want the world to lie to us anymore about how we find hope. Because we'll all be knackered and exhausted and hopeless. (laughs) And that's just no good. Our disappointments go down with the death of Jesus and we rise in hope. Our brokenness dies with Christ and we rise with his wholeness. Our fears die with Jesus and we rise with Christ with a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Our hopelessness dies with Christ and we rise with hope. Oppression, demonic, the world oppression dies with Christ. The government's on God's shoulders. We rise with Jesus. Confusion dies with Christ. And we rise knowing exactly who we were born to be. Do you get the point? (laughs) He's calling you home. And one of the ways we help, (laughs) if you want to thrash some stuff out, eat some nice food and ask loads of difficult questions together, and share your views. We run a course here called Alpha. It started, but it's never too late to join. (laughs) And we'd love to invite you. It's on Thursday evening. Just come. (laughs) Maybe let someone know first if you came with a friend, (laughs) because then we can make sure there's enough nice food. But it's one of the ways we can process life together. Because there's big questions at stake. (laughs) And they have eternal consequences. (laughs) So we'd love to just invite you to to turn around (laughs) and come back to God's arms. Or maybe you're in the house (laughs) and you've missed who God is. Turn again. (laughs) And remember, he'll give you more than a goat. (laughs) He gives you his very self.